Hello, my name is Tamara McNair Hicks, and this is the Supernatural Collision. I'm so excited that you decided to tune in today. I'm so excited this week we have something special for you. We're on the collision course with the occult. This week I have my friend with me, Apostle Sandro Borges. He has such an amazing testimony. So I'm so excited he's here with us today. So sit back, relax, get ready as we collide with the occult. so much for coming back. This is a supernatural collision. I am still so excited to have Apostle Sandra Borges with us today. He's an amazing man of God. And this is a great topic because right now, um, occultism is on the rise. And one thing that he specializes is, is evangelizing to people who are in the occult. And I really, really love his stories. I love his heart uh, for God and for the people of God. And one thing that's important about uh, this particular topic um, is that many Christians stray away from it, right? <laughs> many Christians run from it. Um, we will evangelize a lot of people, but when it comes to those who are uh, in the occult, so to speak, we try to stay away from them. And so I really feel like with all these different things on the rise right now, we have sage and crystals and people trying to curse the president and all these different things we're running into. And literally, um, the occult is more bold than ever. They're out there, they're in your face. As a matter of fact, I was on uh, a, a new app out there. I was out on that app and somebody was doing a room on astrology and tarot card readings for those in business, right? So it's just really prevalent and many people are into it. Um, but what do we do as the church? What is the answer that we provide as the church to go forth and really begin to evangelize people that are stuck in the occult? I mean, it might look pretty, on the outside, but usually there's something very sinister lurking underneath and they're really attacked and they really are um, calling out for help a lot of times. So we as a church cannot be afraid. We have to go out and evangelize and not be afraid of what we're going to run into. So I'm going to have my friend, Apostle Sandra, come through and talk to us today about his experiences, uh, even how he even got started. So do me a favor, introduce yourself and then tell us just how you kind of got started uh, really evangelizing people that are in the occult. God bless. My name is Sandro Borges. Nice to meet you all. Thank you for the opportunity to come on here. Um, how I got started was back in, uh, beyond this 2004. Uh, for those who know me personally, they know about my family history um, on both sides. There's a lot of, uh, uh, how you say, Santaria uh, worship that goes on. Uh, some had a Pentecostal background. But the thing is, regardless of that, my family hid away from that. So no one never preached the gospel to me. No one told me that Jesus died for my sins. I had to have a super and uh, super encounter. I'm talking about, and what I mean a super encounter was God Himself, the Father, had to show up in my bedroom and told me the gospel of Jesus Christ and the gospel of the kingdom. So that's how I got saved through supernatural means with that super encounter. In 2004, that's all I bumped into. Um, people from uh, Hinduism, Buddhism, uh, Wicca, all that, people from various backgrounds. It doesn't matter the skin color, the race, or whatever like that. I'm talking about these are world religions all around the world, and God just showed me and guided me and just put these people in my life, and they themselves had an encounter as well. That is so amazing. First of all, I'm going to have you come back just to talk about your encounter with being saved because I think that's supernatural. I love that because there are many people right now coming to Christ through dreams and visions. So that's one of the things, of course, you know, I love, but mm -hmm. I think that is totally amazing in itself. But when you encounter a supernatural God, and let's go with that. When you encounter yeah. a supernatural God, it makes it a little bit more believable to know that supernatural things are actually happening, right? Yeah. So let's yeah. talk about that. What do you think the problems with the Western world is when it comes to people or even comes to the supernatural? Well, here in the Western world, um, a lot of um, 
they follow their emotions and their intellect concerning the intellect of the systems of man. And so they put more trust in what they study in all the textbooks and even even let's say Christian them, even in their seminaries, that became more authoritative than the word of God itself to them. And so when the systems of man comes in instead of the kingdom, it's culture, it's protocol and it's systems that was brought through on this earth through Jesus Christ be given on to us when we put our trust in um. And, you know, uh, receive them as our Lord and Savior and be baptized and born again. Those those uh, downloads from heaven and how the order is up there will start to go. Because the truth is, when Jesus came, he came as a solutionist. And so those who are truly disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, they too, because this is what it means to be apostolic. I'm not talking about being an apostle, because that's totally different things. Apostleship is the office. An apostle is someone who sits in that office, whose delegated authority was given by uh, the Lord himself. And so as an apostle, as well as just being the son and daughter of God, let's take titles out of it. You are given certain rights, privileges, and powers from up high as a son and daughter of God, because we're what? A royal priesthood, a holy nation. And so we can come to become the solutions in dark times, We become that salt and light of the earth. A lot of us, we want to hold that light back. But when we decide to die to ourselves and let Christ live through us and in us, we'll start to see that now our minds start to become renewed because our mind is starting to become Christ-like. And so we become apostolic people, meaning we're in the likeness of our apostle and high priest of our faith, Jesus Christ. I hope that summed it up for people out there. Listen, that's awesome because, you know, truly we are sent ones. We all are yeah. sent, right? Uh, so we sent with the power and the authority of God in the earth, right? To go forth, right? What to preach, to evangelize, to teach, and to yes. really begin to remove these principalities and powers, uh, spirits in high places. We have the authority to do that. And so we need to be able to do that. And one of the things I see, which I'm about westernized culture compared to other places, that we don't see as much demonic activity. We don't see as much of the cult. So some people don't even believe that it's true. Some people don't even believe that it's real. Some people believe that, you know, that when people are saying that, that they, you know, it's kind of like a fairy tale or it's in their mind. Um, A lot of Western eye cultures always want to go to like schizophrenia or all these different types of things. But we do understand as supernatural people, and it is sort of a supernatural God, that the supernatural is real. And it really is steep into a lot of different cultures. And we have to begin to educate ourselves, begin to understand other things that people are doing and not to be afraid of it, but to understand it so that we can go in and evangelize. You can't evangelize anything you don't understand or anything you don't believe. So let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, how did you come to really know that that was true, that was real, that these things are really happening? Well, for, for me, um, again, no one ever preached the gospel to me growing up. Only thing I heard about anything with Jesus or Christianity was I was going to go to hell. Mm. But I used to read the word of God in secret. And um, I used to hide it underneath the pillow or the bed whenever I heard someone, you know, because I didn't want to get caught, disown, stuff like that. So what was going on was when I decided to pursue, pursue truth itself, because all you have to do is knock on the door and he'll open. A lot of uh, demonic things started to happen uh, on a frequent level. And it was like something which just kept on trying to stop me from, you know, uh, just pursuing who is that God in the Bible and who is that son that uh, everyone likes to speak of. And so when the the supernatural comes, the supernatural, uh, and I'm talking about the supernatural, whether it's of the light of the kingdom or if it's of darkness, when the supernatural come, it does influence like the culture, the community. This, the, the town, the city, the state, the, the systems that are set in place, whether it's a political system, whether it's an education system, um, or even how you run you know, your household as a family. So the supernatural was real. When we see things starting to operate in the physical, first it was going on in the spiritual, you see? And so well, whatever was going on in the spiritual starts to affect the, the thinking because they like to whisper. You know what I mean? Sometimes we think it's our thoughts and those thoughts ain't ours. That's why we got to 
you know, take those wicked imaginations and hold it captive and uh, put it under Christ's feet in Jesus' name. And over time, when those thoughts keep on going, it comes into our heart. And then eventually, you know, what's in the heart comes out, whether it's good or bad, all because what's up here. If we don't renew this, if we renew it on pain, anger, revenge, bitterness and stuff like that, uh, we're going to have characteristics that's demonic. Absolutely. So tell me this. So you have, I know you have a lot of experience with people yes. in the world and a lot of experience with those you have like evangelized yourself. Why don't you give us a couple examples of the times that you had to go through when you first encounter some of these things in Santeria and different things you've encountered. Yep. Give us a couple examples when you had to like really encounter those types of things and then what did you do to kind of bring life and light to those people? Well, my mother had a, um, has a good friend. Uh, I, I was sent down to St. Petersburg, Florida. And when I went there, she was being trained by a Wiccan high priestess who was the highest ranking uh, priestess of Wicca in the region on the uh, East Coast and on the South. And also at the same time, um, a Native American shaman was training her and they happened to be in the same uh, veteran uh, trailer park. And so that whole and like even the entrances the entrance to enter they had the wiccan lady's home there and the entrance to leave was the shaman um was the shaman uh how you say uh male who was uh at the exit and so what was going on what they do is they come and do, you know, rituals or whatever like that, and they become gatekeepers of those areas and those communities. And so when I was sent there, um, I was able to preach the gospel. Um, she was wondering why she was going through depression, why she was going through suicidal thoughts and stuff like that. And I'm talking about she had books about vampirism, uh, turning into wolf, calling on the wolf spirit and stuff like that, talismans, crystal balls, cards, all that. You know, and um, when I came there to bring the kingdom and we got to come with power, a lot of people who are stuck in the cult, they honor power, they respect power and they fear power. And so when the power of heaven came upon me, those spirits, those so-called angels and spirit guides could not show up at that trailer. And so from there, I got to preach the gospel. The demons were casted out in Jesus' name. And, you know, uh, and when that happened, she gave her life to the Lord. And, you know, we just took all her, you know, her her uh, priest, her priestly duties, talismans and all that shamanism, all that sage and all that stuff. And uh, I went through it in the dumpster. And, and this is how and this is how real it is. As soon as I threw all that uh, occultic paraphernalia out for her. Uh, when she repented of that, everyone at that trailer park community, that veteran trailer park community, uh, everyone started either hissing like a snake or hissing like a cat. And they all at the same time, as I was walking from trailer to trailer down to go back to her place, uh, they all looked out the window hissing at me. Wow, that is so powerful. Well, first of all, I love the fact that you went in there, right? Because I mean, some yeah. people wouldn't even do that, but you went in there and then you had to take all of that paraphernalia and throw it out. Some people throw it out, some people burn it with fire, but the fact that she had to repent first. And I think that's so yeah. important we got to remember that the, the Bible tells us that even though the house gets swept clean, something has to fill that house up. So she has to repent so that the Holy Spirit can be, begin to come in and fill up that house. And I think it's amazing, though, that what you said, what happens a lot of communities, though, is that they're all being guided by this certain demonic presence. So when you came yeah. in and what the power of God is stronger, we know that. Why? Because it's yeah. shut down, right? It shut down those angel guys or whatever guys they're listening to. We know they're demons in disguise. It shut them down. And and I, I, I like to call it like a, I call it a lucid moment. God gives them a moment to come to their minds. Like in the prodigal son, he said he came to himself. 
They have a time to come to themselves where God can speak or he allowed you, of course, to be the voice of God and speak to her and give her the opportunity to come to Christ. And I think people forget that God really wants the people. He wants us and he will give people the opportunity to truly come to Christ. And so I think that is such an, a powerful, amazing experience because we have to see that people are calling out. People don't know. I mean, some people just don't know. I know we talked about um, some of the kids. Tell me a little bit about how some of the children that are caught up in the occult, how they handle, how they deal with these types of things. Um, for example, uh, like we were speaking, um, like children from, let's say, the the Mexican background. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a teacher as well, um, in special ed. And mm -hmm. children who come from, like, you know, Mexico, El Salvador and stuff like that, there's a religion called Santa Muerte. And um, when they reach a certain age, which is the age of uh, 13, that's when you become adult. And so what goes on is that they do a ritual where it's a protection ritual and they'll like slaughter the, the, the goat and, you know, they put the blood all over the child for a protection ritual. And uh, that still goes on, not just in those countries, but it goes here on in America. And so like a lot of the uh, children with, uh, who come from that culture and that religion, the Mexican and El Salvadorian, you know, that 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 region area of uh, South America, um, they do a lot of cutting on themselves, mm -hmm. uh, attempted suicides, a lot of depression and stuff like that, uh, because in their in their culture and in their religion it's fused as one you see mm -hmm. yeah and so not every household is like the best type of household to live in because they drink a lot of uh, alcohol is a another way of uh it's called spirits for a reason mm -hmm. and so that's how they commune and then also too even when they're not doing it for ritual pur purposes to drink there, there's always a spirit that comes in through abuse, uh, physical violence, sexual abuse, and stuff like that, that stems from that uh, growing up in that culture and that religion of bloodshed, of pentagrams written or carved on walls and stuff like that. And seeing also, too, human sacrifice, too. Right. Uh, what they do, they keep it secret. They will never reveal who their priest is here in the States because maybe in their nation it's okay, but here in America, we have laws that's against that stuff. And so what they do as a community, uh, they don't really share that much until, you know, they grow a relationship with you. They'll tell you the truth, you know. Wow. So, I mean, I really think that's it's interesting that you talked about this, especially talking about the children, because they really kind of get just birthed into it. Um, so yep. they don't really have a, they really don't have a choice. And so talk to me a little bit about a lot of the different, because you talk a lot about um, like the spirits, you talked about like the blood. So why do they use it? And what do you think happens to them when they get when they get dedicated at a young age? Like how does that affect them? And does it affect their ability to like receive Christ? Or what do you think about that? Yeah, it'll, it affects them because they're under a, a power and under a covenant that they, they don't even know what was the terms of the contract. Wow. All they do is just recite what the priest said to them or the priestess said. And, you know, and they're just there, too, because the parents tell them, oh, you need this. Because the, they do a lot of prophet lying, you know, because prophecy exists in the occultic world. But it's to prophesy you into destruction. You see, it's to prophesy you to have a broken family, broken relationship, broken finances, broken marriage, stuff like that. They prophesy you into those things even though they might sound like it's nice, but you're gonna be yoked up with someone uh, who wants to kill you while you're still um, not in Christ yet. You see what I mean? Right. And so what goes on is just that there's just a cycle and that spirit too, that the family may covenant with, it gets passed down to generation to generation and they wonder why, like why my great grandparents struggle with uh, divorce or why does my uh, the men in my family uh, deal with uh, suicide or the women or sexual sexually promiscuous and stuff like that. Like these spirits literally get passed down. And two, even if the child has nothing to do with it, they will get information because these spirits can manifest itself in the earth realm. And so they could get information concerning their past family members and stuff like that. And, you know, lead them astray. Like they will really show themselves to these people. So when you when you're talking about that, what do you think the best approach is 
to like evangelize even the children? Like, do you think we should go right for the children or should we try to do it like a family a situation? Because I think one of the things we run into as Christians who don't always experience, you know, the blood oaths and experience the, the, the demons that show themselves. I mean, I ran into a woman in Mississippi who told me uh, basically that she, after her husband died, um, this spirit came to her that looked, appeared as her husband, stayed with her for many, many years, I'm 16 years literally, and began to even physically manifest at some point out of her dreams to her real life. And so, you know, a lot of times we're not used to those types of um, apparitions. But if we want to evangelize, we wanted to get in there and say, you know, these people need help. These people need help. Their destructive behaviors, destructive patterns in marriage, can't have children, all these different things that come down uh, through being involved in the cult practice. Of how would you go about reaching these communities, reaching these families? And what would be the best route that you believe that, or the, even the routes you have taken that have proven effective for you? The key is to love people. Good. A lot of us, we already put assumptions on people. And so because we put assumptions and we put these ju judgmental walls, I call it, these borders, uh, they don't want nothing to deal with us and do with us because mm -hmm. of how we spoke to them, how we treated them. Like, um, I, I agree, don't lay hands on, you know, don't let anybody lay your hands on you. But mm -hmm. if somebody who's in the court comes up, you know, you and God sends you um, their way and they need a hug right now because they're going through something. Trust me, you're not getting a transferring experience. There's no impartation going on. You see, the kingdom of God supersedes all that. The authority, the power that God gives supersedes all that. So when the opportunity is there to be the hands and feet of Christ, you take advantage of that. But when you're consistent, that's the key, consistency. When you're consistent, They'll know what you're about. They'll know that your king, that you're coming in the name of is real. And so what they will do, they'll open up the doors for their house to be open, for you can come there, eat, and then speak the gospel of Jesus Christ and the gospel of the kingdom to them. And watch when God shows up with mighty power, because our God is a God of power. That's the key, consistency and love. That is so good. And I tell you, I love that. You know, I watched this uh, gentleman talk one day. I can't remember the the uh, pre a piece, a preacher's name. Um, he literally said that one of his greatest miracles, uh, when he was able to perform miracles, all things he was able to do, all became all because the Lord said this to him. He said, in scripture, anytime God did a miracle or anything else, it says he was moved with compassion. And so we don't have compassion. We don't have love for other people. We cannot literally cannot get them into the kingdom of God. And we cannot allow our biases. We cannot allow uh, the things that we think to get in the way of what God wants. You know, it's been alarming to me, actually, there's been this kind of attitude uh, out there lately, um, especially in Christian world, uh, where, you know, we don't pray for people. We don't agree with them. We just don't pray for them, mm -hmm. right? Um, and that is such a sad thing because Christ prayed for them all. He sat with the sinners. He ate with them, right? He yeah. went to their houses because he wanted them. And so we have to get a hunger back and a drive back because um, the Bible says go out into all the world, right? Not just to the people you feel like you might be able to talk to, right? But to all those who need to hear God. And so I think this has been a very amazing. I think what you do is amazing. I know you've come up against a lot of uh, witchcraft yeah. doing it and God has supernaturally protected you uh, through it all but i think that what you do is so important because i feel like this is a group of people um that we really miss out on it's good people that we don't really evangelize As a matter of fact we are more apt to let them do and say whatever they want to uh versus um going out i mean we get you know we get caught up because they have on some baphomet horns so we get caught up because they you know <laughs> their appearance right they got on dark clothes yeah. you know we get spooked out why because the movies and the movies got us scared right you know stuff start moving around we're scared you know we get we get timid well, we had to remember what our own authority, that Christ has given us authority. There's no power greater than the authority God has given us in the earth. And so this has been an amazing conversation. I, I love this. I, I love this whole topic, the whole subject. I'm going to have you back again because you got way more to say than what yes. you said. But if you want to say, if you have anything that you want to drive home, what would be the last point that you want to drive home uh, concerning what we talked about today? What would be that final like driving point that you would have to say? I will say this. You know, a lot of us like to be so super deep and talk about I'm a gatekeeper and this and that. The thing is, they have gatekeepers, too. And the only way 
for you to have access and take hold of that gate is to love and walk in the boldness and in the mind of Jesus Christ. Then you can take captive of that gate. The door will be opened and watch the kingdom flow into that family, that home, that region, that city and state. Because these people, they're in every walk of society from education, politics, business, uh, rich or poor, it doesn't matter. They're in every area and God wants us to occupy until he comes. Amen, amen, amen. When I tell you that's amazing. So I want to offer a prayer for those who are watching today. And Apostle Sandra, I don't know if you want to pray as well. If you do, I'll let you start off in the prayer. Mm -hmm. We just want to pray for those who are watching today who are dealing with this occult. Maybe you were born into it. Maybe you, you know, you started dealing with it. Maybe you just started dabbling in it. Now you are kind of stuck. We want to offer a prayer for you today. We want to just pray for you. We want to ask God to really release you today. So Apostle, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and begin the prayer. And I'm going to jump in right after you. Father God, I ask, Father, that your peace, your love, your light, and your strength come into the homes, Father, right now, or into the airways, into the car, wherever they might be watching this in secret, Father God. Lord God, let them know, Father, that your love, Father, cannot be destroyed, Father God. Let them know that their value is not based in the blood of goats and chickens and animals and humans, Father God, in Jesus' name. Let them know, Father God, that your love cannot be stopped by what they do, Lord, in Jesus' name. Because when you call who you call, Father God, nothing can stop you, Lord. Let them know that you're the God of love. You're the God of strength, God of forgiveness and grace, Father God. And you will receive them just where they are, Lord. And I ask this right now that you send your angels forth, Father God, to go and draw them, Lord. And draw their thinking, draw their hearts, Father God, towards you, Lord, towards your spirit, Father God. And let them know that your spirit is the ultimate spirit, that your love reigns supreme, and that you are the God of gods in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord God, we thank you right now for everyone that's watching. We ask that your peace begin to flow right now into their homes. Those who are questioning, they're saying, God, I don't know how to get out of this. God, I feel like I'm trapped. Well, God, we thank you today that you're unsticking the people, that when your blood came, when you came, you came to destroy the yoke, you came to destroy the curses, that they have freedom today. Who's in Christ is free indeed. So we speak freedom right now over those who are watching. We speak that you can be free. We believe right now that God is watching over you. We believe right now now that he can break every covenant uh, in your life right now, that you would just call on the name of Jesus today, that you can be saved. We believe right now that God will destroy the yoke in your life. Do not allow the enemy to tell you anything else. God, we thank you right now that, there, that the blood of Jesus will show come forth into their homes, into their house, into their atmosphere. They will begin to destroy the spirit that's trying to rule over them. There's no greater spirit than the spirit of God. So today, God, we ask you to just move by your power, move by your spirit, send your angels to go. Your angels of protection around them even right now and destroy the yoke they shall not be bound any longer their family shall be free they should not have to, to to work so hard to hear your voice no god today give them a lucid moment and allow the spirit of god to come in and break the back of the enemy lose your people today and god we thank you so much for them we believe god you're moving today we for the testimonies that's coming out of this episode and you two will move by the power of god so god we thank you in jesus and we pray Amen and bless God. Thank you guys so much today. Thank you, Apostle Sandra. We just appreciate you and your testimony, what you do for the kingdom. We ask you to continue to move forward in it. And so thank you so much to you guys today for tuning in to Supernatural Collision. We are so excited you tuned in today. We've got more for you coming. This week to me was just an amazing week. I believe God has something amazing for us to say. If you haven't done so, check out Apostle Sandra, what he does online. He's an amazing man of God. He does some great things for God. So make sure you tune in to him. But thank you again for tuning in to Supernatural Collision. My name is Tamara McNair Hicks, and we're so happy you tuned in. Stay tuned for next week. We'll be back with more. God bless you. Thank you for being with us. We trust you've been greatly blessed by this session. For more info and further training, visit us at www.rainfireministries.org.
the Seer Advantage from Tamara McNair Hicks and Rainfire Ministries. Order today.